I'm Denise Napier, Connecticut State Treasurer. Mary Townsend Seymour, a Hartford native and lifetime social political activist, left a dynamic legacy that has often gone unrecognized. Her induction into the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame signals a new era of public recognition for Mary's story, one that is an integral part of Hartford's history. It also serves as a powerful example of one woman's commitment to equal rights and full citizenship for African Americans and for women. Born on May 10, 1873 to Jacob and Emma Townsend, Mary was the youngest of seven children. Her mother and father worked as a seamstress and a cook, two of the few vocations available to blacks in 19th century Connecticut. Although Mary had lost both of her parents by the time she was in her teens, she was spared a bleak future when she was adopted by the Seymour family. Mary's adoptive family differed from her biological family in terms of wealth, uh, social standing within the African American community. Aunt Mame was influenced greatly by uh, the Seymour family at that time. She had a father-in-law who was involved with the military and the Connecticut National Guard. She had a, another family member who was a uh, nurse, probably the first African American nurse. While her adoptive family presented her with new social opportunities, Mary never forgot her roots. At the age of 15, she made a conscious decision to ignore the rigid gender and racial limitations of the times. She committed her first act of social advocacy by noting in public record that she had a full identity as an African American woman. She decided to go into this halls of record, this building, and confront the clerk who was in charge of the vital records. And she asked the clerk to get a, a volume down with her entry in it. She examined it and added her own revisions or additions to it. She was identifying herself in her own mind. She wanted the public to know about this also. As a child, Mary experienced firsthand the effects of discrimination. But it was with the Seymour family that she gained a larger perspective on the obstacles African Americans faced. Much of this knowledge came from her adopted father, Lloyd Seymour, and his son, Frederick, one of the first African American postal workers in Connecticut. Being part of the Seymour family, she heard a lot about African Americans and the discrimination and disadvantages they had in Hartford. Lloyd was very involved in causes similar to those that Mary, uh, Aunt Mame, pursued. After marrying Frederick Seymour in 1891, Mary continued to educate herself about the plight of African Americans. Her activism became a full-time pursuit following the immigration of a large number of blacks into the Hartford area, many of whom were drawn to the employment opportunities of the tobacco fields. The greatest amount of tobacco raising was done in the Hartford, the Connecticut River Valley, right around Hartford. And it was a $10 million industry. With the increase in population came a rise in discrimination and the need for an organized response. Charismatic and determined, Mary attracted the support of nationally recognized NAACP leaders, including W.E.B. Du Bois, James Walden Johnson, and Mary White Ovington. Mary had a keen understanding of the need to unite people of all races around the cause of equality, and she involved both whites and blacks in this effort. Her apartment at 420 New Britain Avenue was actually the place where the three leaders of the NAACP met in order to discuss the formation of the chapter. Mary's activity in the local chapter of the NAACP was quite extensive. She was playing a dual role of spokesperson and a support for the organization. Mary also served as president and vice president to ensure that the chapter grew into a powerful force for change in the community. At the same time, Mary recognized the dual discrimination she faced as an African American woman and declared voting rights for all women, a goal worthy of her time and effort. Accomplished at crossing racial and gender barriers, Mary spoke candidly to whites and blacks about the need for suffrage. She must have been up against some incredible odds in changing a system that had been in place from the beginning of this country. Mary played an important role in the battle for women's suffrage. What she was important for was to, was to educate the white women as to what African American women wanted. In 1920, Mary once again defied social conventions, 
by waging a political campaign for a state office. This pioneering effort to participate in government is an important part of her legacy. Well, she was the first African-American female uh, to, uh, to run for the state house. And so that, that is something. Had to have been an incredible challenge for her to go up against institutional issues, not just individual issues, but institutional issues. Undeterred, Mary brought her energy and knowledge of community organizing to the negative treatment many African American women were enduring as tobacco field workers. In disguise, Mary invaded their ranks to see firsthand the conditions of their work environment and later led the women in forming a union. She dressed in old clothes and actually went into the factory and worked on one of the assembly lines and looked to see how foremen were treating African American women. She was trying to organize African American women into a union that was led by women. Mary Townsend Seymour passed away on January 12, 1957, but her message of equality lives on today. Her earnest belief that an end to discrimination was a universal cause led her to fight tirelessly to unite all people in pursuing equal rights, regardless of their race or gender. Wherever she was in organizations, she always gave the African-American point of view. Wherever she had a chance, she vocally expressed the need for whites to stand up against discrimination for African-Americans. I would describe Aunt Maine as tall, strong, with a commanding presence. She had to have been truly ahead of her time. Saved a wretch like me.